Hi guys and welcome to part two of Project Espresso and having spoken with my elastic trickery expert he has confirmed that this can in fact be wired for single phase as well as three phase and that the power of the unit is no more than say um, a heavy, heavy kilowatt electric fire for example. So in order to wire it for three phase, it's just a case of, uh, of utilizing all the wires instead of having them on three separate points. You just, you've just got three live ones. So uh, having watched a, a very useful um, short uh, tutorial clip from a, a M, M Bean on how to wire a plug, we're going to go right ahead and uh, um, we'll, we'll, you know, we'll, we'll wire up this plug. And uh, so you just stick them in like that, you give it a really good twist. Get them well seated and yeah, that feels pretty firm and we're good to go. So let's go ahead, we'll plug it in and, and we'll see what happens. Of course not, don't be silly. Um, however, I am gonna wire it up to this standard three pin plug. Just for test purposes, this is gonna be an initial uh, test purposes. It should bear the load absolutely fine. It will be plugged directly into a wall socket and it will be going through a trip switch through um, through one of these, which should anything go awry, this should ping and, uh, and it should pop before the RCD, which is all the sockets are obviously wired to as well, does likewise. So uh, what we've got are Three wires which you will find in any normal plug, and they are as normal. You've got your blue neutral, your yellow green earth, and your brown live. In addition to that, you've got a black and a grey, which are also live wires. And in a three-phase system, these would all be wired to a separate bit, and then your neutral and earth likewise. In this case, I'm just going to strip these wires back, and all three of these are going to be connected to the live. And this is literally just to check to see what is and isn't working on the machine. And then the next step, once I know where I'm at, is strip it to bits, start cleaning up components and make a list of replacement components that I'll need, which will include seals, the heater element for the boiler and anything else that I come across during the testing period. So I'm just going to go ahead and wire this up properly. Uh, for anybody watching, the previous bit is not how you wire a plug, just in case. Little disclaimer there. Um, so yes, I'm gonna go ahead and wire this up and I'll be back in a moment. We're set up and we're plugged in. And now going to switch on the switches and test. I've not got the water line uh, feed plugged in. Uh, it really should be plumbed, but what I'm going to do is I've got it in a jug of water, which hopefully I'm going to put above the um, at a sort of higher level and hopefully um, while I'm holding that there that will uh, Draw the water through so switching it on to point one and we've got power light and we've got this which I believe is the low level warning light in the boiler. I'd have to check the instructions, the uh, the manual. I don't know if that's the low level in the boiler or if that goes off when the level's right, but I'm not sure because I know there is some water in the boiler. Um, the water dispenser and the steam wand won't do anything. In this mode, it should actually be a boiler fill mode in position one for the switch. So, um, I would have expected the rotary pump to kick in and fill the boiler, but obviously not, um, unless that's just line pressure and, and it allows the line pressure to fill the boiler. So I'm going to assume that for the moment. So that's in switching position one. Switching it to position two, we've got the same two lights here. And obviously there's something amiss with the gauges here. I'm going to have to look at that because that needle should be down there. This needle should be up here. So we're going to have to have a look at that at some point. Um, no big bang, no, no sparks or nastiness or tripping the trip switch, which is a good thing. Um, the boiler, other than the sort of residual heat from, from it being sitting in the sun in the conservatory, 
I'm not feeling any heat coming from as you would from an element so which indicates that every in every likelihood the element is shot um, as I said the steam wand and the and the feed obviously they, they require water pressure and obviously steam pressure goes without saying um, the shot buttons however should work because the pump should switch on fingers crossed on this one so we'll we'll try each in turn so we'll just try the program stop one first of all okay well that's that's quite promising that's a promising start and I'm sure I heard that suck some of the water up from this jug so hopefully that is the case okay then we'll go for a double that's good that's good these obviously are timed shots um, and clearly you can program them go for a long alrighty and then that one it's definitely drawing the water out of the jug that's good so um, I mean I, I intend to make it so that it will work with water pressure with line pressure anyway plumb it in but it's kind of good to know that at least uh, I'm not running the thing dry just now which was a concern um, so yes definitely not getting any notable heat increase from the boiler there but I can leave this on a bit and see what happens I'm just going to try that the make sure these stop as well and they do indeed so that's good that's good I'm really pleased with that unfortunately I can't test to see that position one actually fills the boiler because that must just be down to line pressure um, and the only other way to do that would be to have this fitted with a nozzle so I could upend it and actually have gravity push the water down to fill the boiler I might see if I can rig something up just to test that what I'm gonna have to do as well is read the read the manual and uh, which I managed to find and download, or for a very similar machine anyway. The Wager machines are all kind of similar. Um, so I'm going to have a read of that and see whether that light should be on or off. See, Well, see if I can find out if that light should be on or off. So we know at the moment that the boiler's not heating up, certainly not right at this moment, which I knew anyway, I was told that, so heating element is definitely going to be one of the things I need. I do know that the pump's working and I know that the group head, the shower head, is, is working. And you can stop and start with those buttons as well, which is kind of good to know. So all the buttons are working there. We know that these valves are opening and closing, but obviously we won't know that they're working until the element's fixed. In, certainly in this case, once the element's fixed, obviously it's going to let steam through. So I know that one will be okay. And then this one, of course, is going to be reliant on water pressure, the, the line pressure pushing in to fill the boiler, forcing the hot water from the bottom out through here. So I'm fairly confident that that's okay, uh, which is good. I'm really pleased about that. There's something wrong with this gauge. I need to try and sort out what's wrong with that. I might need to replace it because I don't know if it's something I can take apart and fix. This will show the boiler pressure at the top and the pump pressure at the bottom. You should see you've got the green band there that shows your ideal uh, brew head pressure. And just for the fun of it, um, I'm just put the group handle on. I'm just going to dispense a shot with the group handle on. I need to try and check out a few more bits of pieces. I'm going to leave it switched on for a little while, just on the off chance that anything heats up a little. Um, but I'm pretty sure it won't because being quite a big 2.7 kilowatt heating element and being quite a big heating element, if it was going to heat up, it should most certainly have started heating up to a reasonable degree already. So 
So, uh, apologies if the sound was a bit choppy just a moment ago, but I'd got the microphone out of the way. But, uh, but that's where we're at just now. So, thank you for joining me for this second in the video series. And the next step is uh, now that I know we've got power to the unit, the buttons work and the valves should work once we've got line pressure and steam pressure. So the next step is now going to be taking the unit apart bit by bit and giving everything a thorough clean and I will be making a list of components. What I'm going to try and do is, is order all the major components I'm going to need to fix this and get it running um, in one go. Uh, I'm going to renew all the seals and gaskets and such because while it's apart, why, why would you not? It's just common sense. Um, and get a new group head gasket and everything else while I'm at it. And give everything a really good clean through. I'm going to make up a bath of citric acid and we're going to have some descaling solution so we can give everything a good descale, clean out, wash out, um, get everything looking nice and shiny and new and, uh, and then put the whole thing back together uh, run a couple of back flushes through to make sure everything's cleaned out of there and get it all plumbed in and uh, so yes a few more videos to come I think the next one it'll be um, a bit by bit as I'm taking it apart and see if we find anything interesting so thank you for watching so far and uh, stay tuned and check back for more updates